Hello and welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So today we want to talk about using the Unify G3 instant camera on Amazon Echo Shows and on Amazon Fire TVs via voice command. So the Ubiquiti Unify G3 instant camera is the least expensive Unify camera to date at only $29 on the website, although shipping and tax are more, so it ends up being a little bit more than that. So most Wi-Fi cameras have slow performance for real-time recording because they use 802.11n at only 2.4 gigahertz, and most cameras host a web server for management and also an RTSP server for streaming. On low-end hardware, this causes performance to suffer a lot. So the G3 Instant has an ARM Cortex A7 processor. It has two gigs of DDR3 memory. It has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi at five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, and a two megapixel CMOS sensor providing 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second with a 133 degree viewing angle. That's almost unprecedented in terms of performance for a Wi-Fi camera. So this Unify camera has no onboard web server. It has no onboard RTSP server, and it requires Unify Protect on a UDM Pro, a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, or one of Unify's NVRs in order to use the camera. So this is the first Wi-Fi camera I've ever seen that supports 802.11ac at 5 gigahertz and can do 30 frames a second at 1080p. This is because the configuration and management as well as the streaming are offloaded to Unify Protect. The camera simply links raw footage to Unify Protect where it can be recorded and viewed. The quality is good for an inexpensive camera. So the G3 Instant configuration in Unify Protect allows you to optionally turn on low, medium, or high resolution RTSP streaming to be accessed outside of Unify Protect. By default, this streaming is RTSPS, which is the secure version of RTSP, which is not compatible with very many players on the market today. The RTSP stream link comes from the Unify Protect address and not from the camera. Example, Unify Protect RTP, RTSPS link for the G3 Instant looks like this. It's an RTSPS at the address of the Unify Protect node, port 7441, some string of characters, question mark, enable SRTP. So this stream link can be RTSP by removing the S, changing the port number from 7441 to 7447 and removing everything from the question mark to the end of the streaming string. Therefore, it would look like this. So the RTSP streaming link can be used to record the camera on software like uh, Blue Iris, ZoneMinder, Shinobi, or iSpy, or even others. And in addition, you can use the RTSP link to display this camera on viewers like OnVir or TinyCam Pro, which are popular viewers used on Android. So this video is really about how do you stream this camera to Madame A. That's what I call her so I don't trigger your devices. Well, Amazon Echo Shows and Amazon Fire TVs can accept streaming from only supported cameras. Unify cameras do not have streaming support for Madame A. So then there's a service out there called Monocle, and it's located at uh, monoclecam.com, 
and it's a gateway service that enables seamless integration of IP-based network cameras like the G3 instance with Madam A. To accomplish this, there are three components. The first of which is the Monocle Cam website where you register an account and you register your cameras. Secondly, the Monocle Madam A skill to add to your cameras to Madam A. And finally, a Monocle Gateway server which is installed on a Linux instance on your local LAN where your cameras are located. So, the Monocle Cam website, you go to it and you register for a free account, again at monoclecam.com. The page looks like this. You have an option to create a new account, and once you do that, you can sign in. I notice it says that this is beta, but this thing has been beta now for probably going on four years. I just don't think they ever updated the website. The second step is you want to get a Monocle token. Well, on your Monocle account, you can go to the My Account option and request a token. When you go to request a token, you give the token a name. The name's not important other than for your own purposes. And after that, you want to copy the API token string that you get back from that operation, which looks a lot like this. So you want to copy the contents, put it in a file somewhere, save it. We're going to use it later on. And then we want to prepare to install the Monocle Gateway. So the Monocle Gateway can be installed in any Linux server instance on your LAN. In my case, I created a LexD container with one gigabyte of RAM, but it can also be run on a Raspberry Pi. If you watch my channel very often, you notice that I'm really a real avid LexD uh, proponent. And you can create a Monocle user account and grant it pseudo privilege. And then you want to install the OpenSSH server. And just for fun, I go install net-tools to give me the if config command. So that looks a little bit like this. First of all, um, this is the command that I launched on my system to create a container. We talked about that in a lot of the containerized videos that I have. And then in order to connect to my LexD instance, use LexC exec, the name of the um, server, which is monocle-gateways, my LexD, and I go into the Bosch shell. And then I add a user called monocle. I give it a password. I do a user mod ag sudo monocle to add monocle to the sudo group and then I do an apt install open SSH server and then finally I add net tools just because I can. Okay so installing the monocle gateway looks a lot like this. You SSH to your server, you make a temp directory, you cd into that temp directory, you download the gateway with a wget command, which I'll put this in the show notes. You extract the package with the tar command. You sudo make dir a directory in slash etsy slash monocle. And you copy the token that we generated earlier on the monocle website to slash etsy slash monocle and a file named monocle dot token. And then finally, in order to install the server, you do a sudo dot slash install sh. It's a very simple, quick script to install the server. So let's SSH over to our new Monocle server here. Type in the password. And there we're logged in as the Monocle user. Now the first thing you want to do is make dir on temp, create a temp directory, cd into the temp directory, and then after that we're going to go get the monocle gateway code, which is here. We've done a wget. Next step is we want to extract 
the gateway code. So there we've extracted it. And then we want to create a monocle place to store the token that we obtained earlier from the monocle website. So we're going to do a sudo make dir slash etsy slash monocle. And then we're go we after we generate and download the token which we had done earlier, we want to copy that over there to that location. So in this case, I'm going to cd over to Etsy slash monocle, <clears throat> and I'm going to do a sudo nano uh, monocle dot token and then I'm going to get the copy of that token file so in this case this is my token ah, I didn't get the last end of it okay copy this part and paste it over here so that's the token file save the file going to do a CD back to home and CD back into temp. If I do an LS, there are the files. We simply run the install script. And that's all there is to it. Now that the server software is installed, you want to go over to your Unify Protect I have two G3 instant cameras and I've named one Thing 1 and the other Thing 2. So I'm going to click on Thing 1. It opens the panel for Thing 1. Go into settings on Thing 1 and then scroll down to the bottom and they have a section called Advanced. Expand the Advanced section and you have three choices for resolution, low, medium, and high. The high resolution is 1920 by 1080. I'm going to go ahead and copy that link. Then I'm going to go over to the Monocle website dashboard. And when you're on that dashboard, you have an option to add a camera feed. I already have several cameras in my Monocle gateway, many of which are real link cameras. But at the bottom, I've added thing one and thing two already. So when you click the add button, you're going to see a screen that looks a bit like this when you add a new camera. I give it the name Thing1. This is the name I want it to be known by, by the Amazon Echo. And then the description is Thing1. The, dis the description cannot be left blank, so I usually make it the same as the name. The manufacturer is Ubiquiti. The model is G3 Instant. And then I paste the camera feed into the URL field. Now, in the URL field, when you paste yours in, you're going to have an RTSPS. Remove the S at the end. You're also going to have a port number that's 7441. Change that to 7447. And then finally, at the end of the line, delete from the question mark to the end of the line so you don't have that section on there. And then your URL will look roughly like this, except obviously the address of your Unify Protect server will be here. And then your string over here will be different than mine. The authentication should be set to none and the video resolution should be set to 1920 by 1080. The video codec should be set to H264. The audio codec should be AAC, although I'm not sure I have the audio working as of yet. And finally, the most important thing is that the tunnel, uh, the tags option is set to at tunnel and at tunnel tells it to use the gateway that we installed in order to convert the video. When you're done, you're going to go ahead and click save. Next, we want to install the Alexa skill. Oops, I said her name. To have your cameras recognized by Madame A, you have to install the monocle skill. So you can either go to your um, application on your phone for Madame A, or you can use the website and you're going to look for a skill that's called the monocle RTSP RTP IP camera skill. 
and you simply enable it on your uh, Amazon uh, Matame account. And once you do that, then uh, that's the main requirement after having the gateway installed. So then we want to use a voice command. The one last step is we're going to say, we're going to give her the discover command, a voice command discover, and that'll go ahead and find the cameras that we've added. And then your G3 instant cameras can be viewed on your Amazon Echo or your Fire TV. You just simply say, uh, Madame A, show me, and the name of my camera was Thing 1, the other was Thing 2, so I just give it the name that I gave it and the gateway on the website. Alexa, show me Thing 1. Okay. So, in summary, the G3 Instant Camera is a great alternative to WISE cameras for about the same price. You need to have Unify Protect running to use the G3 Instant because it doesn't offer its own RTSP, C RTSP server. And Unify Protect offers the RTSP video stream and not the camera. So I can't emphasize that enough. This camera is pretty useless if you don't have a Protect server. And Monocle Gateway must be run on your LAN to convert the video stream for the Amazon devices. And voice commands for cameras add a lot of flexibility. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks so much for visiting the channel and I hope to see you next time. Please subscribe and like.